35, take one, sound one. Quiet, please. Quiet, Mr. Fleming. Fall down. Quiet, Mr. Flynn, would you tell us about the first time you knew Harry Truman? I met Harry Truman in 1917, the time they were organizing Battery D and the battalion that was a part of the 129th Field Artillery. Where was that? That was uh, at the old convention hall up here in Kansas City. What kind of, uh, what kind of guys were in Battery D? Most of the... Uh, boys in Battery D were from Rockhurst College, and they came from some of the better families. They were in school at the time that uh, the Battery was organized, and uh, most of them stayed with Battery D through the tour of duty. Now when uh, Harry Truman came in to take charge of Battery D, oh, he, that was in France, wasn't it? Yes. What did these boys think of Harry Truman, who was a Baptist, uh, taking over command? Well, I never heard uh, any of them express any any reason for him not coming, because they all knew him. He was in the battalion. They knew Harry Truman as a battalion in the battalion. I think they were very happy to have him. Now, you said something the other day about uh, you <coughs> see Harry Truman uh, writing letters. Would you tell us about that? Well, um, he used to get a lot of letters from the old Irish mothers and the like who were back here from the college and boys. And I think it, I don't think that he ever went to bed any night before he answered those letters. I used to come in maybe later than he would. Uh, especially down to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And you'd see him in his tent writing letters, answering those letters he had received that day. up on 12th Street, now where the Phillips Hotel is. And we used to see him there quite often. That was a hangout for a lot of us that knew him in the service. In fact, uh, you could go there any day and you'd see some of your old friends that would drop in and see him. Why was it a hangout? Because of why? Well, I don't know why, but most of the boys that uh, were in the battery had lived in Kansas City. He was their old battery commander. They had a a great de degree of respect for him. They loved him, and they make that their hangout, trying to support him if it could. Well, most guys, uh, after the war is over, you know, say they want to kick their battery commander <laughs> rather than. Not true. Not with him. Well, there was some kind of special quality, though, with Harry. Then, what could? What do, what do you think that was? <coughs> Well, his personal interest in everybody, I think, that he had under his command. And he did have that. Do you think the Battery D guys brought business or discouraged business? Both. I think that they, they brought some business and, and probably uh, imposed a little on him. Probably. Please. Sound 101. Mr. Flynn, did the men in Battery D during the Eddie Jacobson days ever go into the haberdashery and get a loan to 
five bucks title over for the weekend? I think so, many times. Sir, it'd be very helpful if you uh, do that again, but say, uh, after sort of how would it come naturally to you to say, you know, after the war, uh, guys from Battery D used to go into the haberdashery and get a loan. Otherwise, people aren't going to know what you're talking about. Would you do that? Well, I think that uh, many of those that dropped in to see Truman, uh, Eddie Jacobson would probably borrow five to carry him over the weekend or something of that kind. There weren't too many of them when they came back from the service that had some place to go to work. That's funny. What do you all think when you found out Harry Truman was going into politics? Well, naturally, we, uh, we were before him, of course, liked it. Personally, I didn't know too much about his first venture here in Kansas City and when he was judge. But I got better, closer touch with him after he became senator. Did you ever play uh, any poker with Mr. Truman? No, I never played poker with him. Not too good a poker player, I think. You're not or he's not? Neither one of us. That's what I hear. What I hear about <laughs> uh, Mr. Flynn, I wonder if you'd tell us uh, the story you told Mr. Brignone the other day about your son and about uh, the letter from Mr. Truman. Now, if you'd be kind enough, sir, when you tell us this, uh, would you mention that uh, Mr. Truman was in the White House and that you didn't know knew what was happening and so on? Just tell it in your own way. In 1948, uh, December, we had an accident in which my only son was injured, killed, died five days later, rather. And during the time that we were preparing for his funeral, <clears throat> I received a telegram from Harry Truman of condolence. And I don't know how he was notified. I don't think he was ever notified. I think he saw it in the paper. And he said, told me afterwards that he kept in close touch with, in those five days, what was happening. And I thought it was very kind of him to remember us at that time. Mr. Flynn, did you go to the inaugural in 19, well, January 20th, 1949? And I asked because I understand a lot of battery D men and other men. No, I didn't go. I went there. But I had been back to the White House several times while he was there. Did you think uh, Mr. Truman would come back to independence after he got out of the White House? And in answering that, if you'd be kind of, sir, uh, if you t I know what the answer is, so if you tell us that you did and why you think he came back to independence. Well, yes, I thought... Uh, Mr. Truman would come back to Kansas City after he, he uh, finished in Washington, finished his tour, because most of his friends were here, and his sister was here, and his brother. And they had this farm out here, saying which since has been developed in Truman Corners. And I think this think that he was a Missourian and wanted to be back in Missouri and Independence. I understand, sir, that a lot of people who, before he came back, particularly in places like the Kansas City Club, who didn't think much of him, or pretended not to at least, uh, have now become his great and good friends. Is that a fact? Well, I think he's growing every day. I think a lot of people that uh, criticized him for a lot of things that happened that he wasn't responsible for, uh, coming back to funerals and things here, uh, now I think it was very fine in him to do so. You said, sir, earlier that you uh, were in Washington. Yeah, yeah. I've already done that. <laughs> That's right. I'll see. Pardon me? You said earlier, Mr. Flynn, that you were <coughs> several times while the president was in the White House. Did you see him while you were there? And if you yes. did, tell us about that, will you? 
Well, in 1951, we were having some trouble here with the market conditions, rollbacks, which was after the war. During the war all that time, they, we were under price controls. And uh, they had talked uh, this one time that I saw him uh, about moving that price back three times at a dollar to a dollar and a half each time. So I went back to see him, and uh, later a group of six of us went back, and he had his full cabinet, including his price stabilizer, uh, Lazar, uh, what's it, DeSalle, I believe, was at that time. He asked us to come back with some figures and some true price on cattle of what it would take for us to even break even. We saved two of those rollbacks. He saved it for us.